And a special guest joining us on The Insider this morning. Dave Riley is the COO from Sunshine Village. How are you doing today, Dave? Great. Good morning, Rob and Tanya. You're with us here today uh, responding to some comments we made on the program last week regarding the challenges Sunshine Village is facing with regards to parking, the impending closure of the access road next season. The crux of what we were talking about was regarding site guidelines, long-range planning, and our argument was because Sunshine doesn't have those site guidelines in place yet, it's difficult to ask for things like parking. There were also some statements such as we weren't playing by the rules, and I just wanted people to understand how we got to this point. Mm -hmm. We're very good at following all the rules that Parks Canada lays out for us, but site guidelines is a negotiated process, and it has to be a win-win situation. And in the case of Sunshine Village, it really is all about parking. Currently, our long-range plan from back in the 70s approved a people at one time capacity of 6,000 people, but yet we were only provided parking for 4,500 people, and that's why we end up parking on the access road. And so all of us, including parks, recognizes that that has to be solved. We have not been able to get parks to agree to any of our proposals. And initially, and this has been going on for years, mm -hmm. um, we proposed a parking expansion within the leasehold area up on what's called the bench, which is right next to the existing parking lot, and they didn't want to do that. So we responded and created designs for satellite parking lots down the road. And initially, they appeared to like those proposals. And then they changed their mind and said, we don't want those either. You know, without any kind of mutual agreement, on where the parking is going to go, which we seem to be having trouble getting to, there is no site guidelines. There's nothing more to talk about. And so this latest move where they're saying we're not going to allow you to park on the access road at all is really moving the wrong direction. It's kind of an assault on Canadians who ski up there, particularly in the context of many decades of parking on that road. And Tanya made the point, well, you have zero right to park on the road. That is going to be sorted out through the courts, that technical question. But whether or not Parks has the right to put a closure in or not, you know, the question is, is it the right thing to do without having another solution in place first? If you look at Lake Louise and Marmot, which you referenced last week also about how they were able to move forward with so many things, um, I would challenge that also. They haven't actually haven't moved forward with anything that was approved in site guidelines. But the fact that their site guidelines were signed also included approvals to continue to park on the road at both of those resorts. So we find it unfair, at least, that we would be discontinued on that. So what I hear you saying is that part of the site guideline process that you're engaged in with Parks Canada are these discussions around parking and that when we're hearing you discuss these issues with the public about these options that that actually is part of the conversation that is the foundation of what those guidelines would be at the end Absolutely. of that process. That's an important, really important point because I feel as if the way it was framed, especially in that take action campaign, is it didn't mention that this was part of the site guideline process. Well, for years, that process has been going on and these conversations have been happening. It's an interesting process that they set up because, you know, you sit in a room with Parks Canada and the scary and you talk about fixing problems and developing a first class resort that will stand the test of time and will work really well. And if the parties can't agree on something like parking, you really can't move on to the other questions. And at the other resorts, they were able to solve those questions. They added parking in both cases at Lake Louise and Marmot. Just to address the issue that Parks Canada used as a impetus to close the access road to parking for vehicles starting next season, they said avalanche hazard was the main factor there. Can you speak to that a little bit? The upper part of the road is where those avalanche paths come across the road, and that's not what we're talking about now. Now we're talking about the lower part of the road, which doesn't have those risks. But let's talk about those risks. So how do you think that we operate a ski resort that has avalanche terrain where people ski? Through avalanche management, obviously. That's right. We do this on a daily basis. There are several pods around the ski resort that are high-risk avalanche terrain. You bomb it, you release it, and then you open it. And this is what has been going on on the access road for decades. The avalanche that occurred a couple of years ago that Tanya referenced that was a quote-unquote wake-up call for Parks Canada really wasn't a wake-up call at all. What happened is that we did what we were supposed to do. We closed the road. We heli-bombed it. The snow came down. It hit the road. There was no one in that location. We plowed it off. We opened it up. That wasn't anything out of the ordinary. And so if we can run a ski resort that has the avalanche train, I think Parks Canada can operate a road to provide the access to the ski resort. 
And in fact, our lease requires that they do that. So what's next from here? I mean, you know, we're in a situation now where you've got an impending big parking problem unless you can get some solutions in place by the fall. And there doesn't seem to be any solutions forthcoming at the moment as far as things that Parks Canada will agree to. So where do you go as a ski resort from here? We are thinking this is going to be a disaster if it's not reversed. Think about 930 in the morning on a Saturday. Cars are coming in at the rate of about 700 per hour. If you put a closure up at the bottom of the road, you're going to back cars up immediately to the Norquay exit on the TCH. The TCH will be gridlocked. If you put a closure at the top of the road, then you're going to fill the entire seven kilometers of the access road with cars sitting there idling, wondering what's going on. And then they're all going to start making U-turns in the middle of the road. They're going to be frustrated. The easiest, safest thing to do is to get those cars parked as they're coming in in the areas where you have good sight lines. Parks Canada doesn't have the resources set up to even manage this. It takes us 30 people to do it correctly. I haven't heard anything about them hiring 30 people to manage this. Or what are they going to do, start towing cars? There was a report that McElhaney did that recommended against closing the parking on the road without an alternative solution because of the problems that that was going to create. So at this point, we didn't want to have to go public on this and put a website like sunshineparkingsolution.com up and ask the public to get involved and write emails to Ottawa. We don't want to take this to judicial review. But this decision is so bad, and it's going to cause so many problems, we had no other choice. Dave Riley, COO of Sunshine Village, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you.